I just want to take a minute and update you on what's going on here at the church during this time of shelter in place with the COVID-19 virus. God has given his people, the church, the called out gathering of believers, a biblical mandate to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. With everything that is going on in the world due to COVID-19, the church is faced with a new dilemma. How do we balance God's clear teaching, obedience to local and national mandates, as well as wisdom and good old common sense? The precautions that have been set forth by those in leadership in our country and state are for the good of the people that those officials are responsible to protect. I genuinely believe this. As a pastor that is making similar decisions for a much, much smaller group, I understand a little of the difficulty that these leaders are facing. This is not an easy task, and we should be praying daily that God gives them wisdom. It's interesting to me during this time that a defining phrase has been used repeatedly, essential or non-essential. The phrase shows a lot about our culture. Schools and churches have been defined as non-essential, while alcohol stores and marijuana dispensaries are essential. I understand that the number of people in these settings is dramatically different but they're still defined as essential and non-essential. Make no mistake, the church is not a non-essential organization, even for a brief time. The church is God's plan, and the hope of the world in this generation and in everyone since Christ. As believers, we should be the ones on the front lines adamantly proclaiming that truth, without hesitation, without reservation. Many churches have been doing this, So much so that now, Arizona, Delaware, Kansas, Texas, Florida, Colorado, Kentucky, Michigan, New Mexico, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Wisconsin have all defined church as essential and allowed them to meet while encouraging them to practice safe health measures. In Georgia, there is actually freedom for churches to gather as well as long as social distancing of six feet of separation is practiced. Even though meeting in this situation is still not recommended, it is allowed. So we know we have a clear biblical mandate to meet together and we have a government allowance to meet together, though it's not recommended. But there is still the side of wisdom and prudence. In the Old Testament, there were times when individuals had a contagious disease, leprosy, and they were commanded to stay away from other people to prevent the spreading of the disease. Now, mind you, everyone else was not told to stay away, just those with the disease. COVID-19 is a contagious disease. What makes it tricky is that you you may have it and not know it yet, or have it and never know it. So how do we as a church exercise wisdom while seeking to obey God's mandate and respect civil leadership? I believe that much of our direction in the days ahead needs to come down to a simple thought. We need to look for safe ways to gather together, not for reasons to not gather. Or simplified, ways, not reasons. In conjunction with this, our leadership in the church, we have evaluated options. First, I do not believe that it is wise to meet together in a centralized location at this time. Physical contact equals potential exposure. Second, I do not believe that it is wise to meet in smaller groups in people's houses or classrooms at this time because even though it limits exposure, it still creates exposure. Third, we have considered drive-in services. There are some logistical issues with this as many other churches are going this route and the necessary equipment's in short supply. The need for restrooms in such a situation creates a physical contact point. Additionally, though I believe it would be encouraging corporately, it is hard to have any real communication between cars with the windows rolled up. The fourth option we looked at is that we fortunately live in a day in which there is great access to each other electronically, through phone and computers, while not creating the exposure physical contact creates. Moving forward, we will continue uploading singing and preaching to Facebook, YouTube, and our website. 
This allows a sense of corporate worship and Bible exposition to continue. We will be creating home groups. This will be small groups of individuals and families that will meet weekly through Zoom. Zoom is a free internet-based video conferencing service. The leader of each group will be reaching out to you about joining in. They will help you get connected. There will be directions and video tutorials on our website to help you navigate installation of the needed software to your computer or your phone. For those that just got a headache with the thought of Zoom, we will be creating a conference call group where all that is needed is a phone. You will just call a number at a specific time to join your group audibly. I have no idea how long this will continue. What started as a couple of weeks has moved to a couple of months. We will continue to evaluate our options. We will continue to look for ways, not reasons. We will seek to obey God, respect authority, protect each other, and grow in grace during these difficult days. I am praying for you, and may the Lord bless you and keep you safe.